Uh, namaste, hello, and good afternoon to everyone. I am Susan Shrester, uh, your buddies, and the host of today's webinar. Uh, at first, on the behalf of NextGen team, I would like to thank you all for accompanying us today, despite the ongoing pandemic crisis, and would want to welcome each of you uh, to this webinar. So, uh, at first, uh, all of us would want to know how to contribute to United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and discuss the ideas with people from all over the world. So that's why we have someone here to today to brush our mind in the topic Online SDG Youth Action Forum. Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs are agendas comprising 17 goals, 169 targets, and 232 indicators that aim to end poverty, promote economic growth, preserve uh, the environment, uphold peace and justice, and establish partnerships by the year 2030. NextGen supports this call of the United Nations in acting for sustainable development goals in our respective targeted communities. The online SDG Youth Action Forum is designed to improve participation and network of the global youth community for attaining the sustainable development goals by the year 2030. So at first, I would like to highlight some of the things you need to be careful about before starting uh, this webinar. Uh, as this is a listen only mode, I request all of you to be interactive as possible. And if you have any question or query, you can communicate to the panelists via chat or sending a reaction. And uh, lastly, I hope all of us will keep uh, the enthusiasm high. Uh, at first, uh, I'd like to thank every one of uh, my colleagues without whose uh, diligent work uh, this moment would not have been possible. So I would like to acknowledge uh, this. I would like to acknowledge all of uh, my colleagues who have worked day and night to make this possible. So I'd like to uh, take a moment to introduce uh, my colleagues, our NextGen members. So we have uh, Mr. Jack Panjia, the president of NextGen, Mr. Sagar Shrestha, chief correspondent, Mr. Biplav Karki, the technical manager, Ms. Anisha Adhikari, media manager, Mr. Vivek Malik, uh, public relations manager, and Mr. Nirdesh Patrai, marketing manager, uh, Mr. Akash Saraf, the creative designer. Mr. Anjil Biswakarma, graphics designer. Mr. Aman Gupta, the event manager. Ms. Apeksha Ghemire, social media head. And myself, uh, Susan Shrestha, the sponsors manager. So, uh, uh, Ms. Apeksha Ghemire would also be assisting me as the co-host for today's program in case of any, uh, in case of any mishaps or unforeseen uh, circumstances. Moving forward, uh, today's platform would not have been successful without generous support from our partners and sponsors. So I would like to take uh, this moment to acknowledge uh, all of our partners who have helped us in this mission as well. We are lucky to introduce our sponsors, technical partner and media partner. At first, uh, we have uh, Gyapu Marketplace as our associate partner for the event. Uh, I request the technical team to uh, put forth a small clip from our associate partner.
similarly, we are delighted to have uh, Tik Patro and Tik Sathi as media partner of our event as well. And uh, at last, but not the least, we have Nepal Research and Education Network, NREN, and uh, Society of Electronics and Communication Engineers, Nepal, SECN, as technical partners of our event. Uh, I'd like to request our technical team to put forth uh, the clips as well. Okay, so I guess we are uh, have, having a small disturbance regarding the clips. So we'd be taking forward uh, with the program. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, you to today's facilitators. So uh, at first we have Mark uh, Zakinto as our facilitator. Uh, Mr. Mark is a field SDG advocate under My World 2030, an initiative by the UN SDG Action Campaign. Uh, UNDP and the Overseas Development Institute with thousands of additional outreach partners from UN agencies and NGOs. Our team is very grateful uh, for having him in this webinar and I'd like to welcome and thank uh, you very uh, much for today's uh, your commitment to our program, uh, Mr. Mark Zakento. Okay, yeah. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you so much. Uh, Bip Lab, and thank you so much also to the Next Gen Team, Susan, for introducing me to organize this program, especially in front of your uh, fellow uh, Nepalese young leaders. So welcome to the online SDG Youth Action Forum. And I would also like to say hello and hi to my fellow Filipinos. And I think majority of them, I've already seen them of or they've already been part of our previous event. So I would also like to say hi to the original facilitators also, or the my co-moderators also for this event in my previous forum. So uh, I think Sydney Torrenueva is here, Reynard, Francisco, uh, Marian Sige, and my respondent. So hi. And I would also like to say hi to everyone for this Session. This is the online SDG Youth Action Forum, and yeah, uh, I'll I'll try to make it quick since we have uh, I think also another speaker after me. So welcome. So I am Mark Sinto. I think some of us already know me, especially those who have already attended this version or this online SDG Youth Action Forum before. But for those who don't know me, I am Mark Asinto. So I'm currently one of the co-chairperson for operations of the Southeast Asian Leaders Organization. And I'm also one of the field SDG advocates of My World 2030. So it's an initiative by the UNDP, UN SDG Action Campaign, and UN Volunteers to raise awareness, action, and advocacy for the sustainable development goals. So, sorry. Yeah, and then I'm also the chief builder of Pass It On. So Pass It On is a community organization that embraces self-awareness and engage, uh, embrace in self-growth towards passion, positivity, purpose, and progression. And then I'm also, of course, the curator of the online SDG Youth Action Forum. So this is an online community, actually. It started as an online community, a Facebook online community wherein we conduct and we promote SDG-related initiatives to the youth. So yeah, uh, I guess before we start, so what I usually do or what we usually do when we start this online SDG Youth Action Forum is to introduce yourself. So now since I think we're almost like around 250 participants with almost from almost 40 countries, so we would like to get to know you more. So what's your name? Where are you from? And what do you do? So feel free to use the comment section in the Zoom. And for those who are live on Facebook, courtesy of our tech partner, you can also feel free to comment it down in the live stream below. So yeah, uh, it's nice to see people. So feel free to comment it down. So I'll be waiting for your responses. So we have, of course, from Nepal. We have from the Philippines. And we would like to know you more, uh, what you do. So if you're working, where do you work? If you're studying, where do you study? Or if you have an organization, what's your organization? So we have 
from of course Nepal. I think majority are from Nepal, students from Nepal and such. Okay. So what's the greeting for Nepal? Uh maybe someone can tell me also so that I can also use it. So in the Philippines, we use the greeting Mabuhay. So Mabuhay, uh, ah, namaste, okay. So namaste to everyone. Here in the Philippines, we use the word Mabuhay. Mabuhay means welcome. So Mabuhay, yeah, from the Philippines. So feel free to comment it down more and introduce with one another. And I think the organizers also created the WhatsApp group. So Biplab or anyone from the Next Gen team can just comment down the WhatsApp link before below and just join so we can communicate even after the forum. So now, of course, I think we have already said this a while ago, but why are we here? Of course, we know that this is a time of pandemic and majority of us are here to uh, spend time and of course be mentally in check. But aside from that, of, of course, it's also an opportunity for us to learn and introduce the sustainable development goals and solidify the sense of ownership and commitment to act for the sustainable development. So now, just a few house rules and principles. So that this is also like still the normal proceedings of my regular online SDG action forum. So first, of course, please be open-minded to the ideas and discussions. We have, as mentioned, we have almost 250 participants from over 40 countries and Please uh, use this as an opportunity to learn from one another. Second, I think this uh, picture would be familiar to our Filipino participants. So this is a commercial in the Philippines and it says, please do not hesitate to ask. So again, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of ideas and insights. Feel free to share it down. And maybe this is an opportunity for us to network and to connect with one another as well. And then please listen when someone is talking. So again, I'm the one talking here. And uh, I think this is a webinar, so this rule doesn't really apply. But again, if we have questions, feedback, concerns, or any other questions, feel free to use the Q&A portion there. So I think there's a Q&A panel there. You can freely use the function, or you can also use the Slido link, or you can just comment it down in the chat group below. Okay. So now, uh, I have three questions for you. So I think while people are still commenting down their insights and their uh, greetings, I have three questions for you. So first question, what do you think when you hear the word sustainable development? Again, what do you think when you hear the word sustainable development? Please comment down your answers in the chat group. So we would like to know. What do you think of the word sustainable development? Or, yeah, you see future, okay, compromising, long-lasting development, okay. How about the others? Especially those who have been community, nice one, Claire, Garcia. Uh, how about the others? Solution, reliable, economic, and long-lasting for community, lifelong solution. So we have different definitions of sustainable development. And we know that the technical definition of sustainable development is meeting the pre the needs of the present and the future without, of course, compromising the needs of the future. That's the technical definition being used by various textbooks and various uh, researches about sustainable development. But, of course, we know that some of us might get too technical about it. So, I try to use this analogy to simplify what sustainable development is. So sustainable development is like your long-term relationship, especially, uh, of course, some of us have, might have been already in a relationship, maybe short-term or long-term, but sustainable development is like your long-term relationship. Why so? Uh, of course, in a long-term relationship, we need to ensure that all of our needs, uh, both you and your partner, uh, meet the needs, both of your needs, both in the present and the future, whether socially, physically, mentally, psychologically, and other needs. And it's like similar to what sustainable development wants to attain. Sustainable development, of course, wants to attain and ensure that we aim to achieve this both in the short term and the long term and these social, economic, and environmental needs are being met. So yeah, that's the first one. And second question, what are your hashtag goals or what are your goals in life? So feel free to comment it down 
below your answers and yeah we would like to hear more from you so we might have travel goals I, I am really interested to go to Thailand and hopefully soon I can go to Nepal. I, I've been hearing a lot of interesting things in Nepal. Uh, and hopefully for those Nepalese, we hope to see you soon in the Philippines. Uh, we might have travel goals even in our domestic countries. So for example, here in the Philippines, we have beautiful islands. I think in Nepal have beautiful uh, landmarks also in travel places. Then we might have like squad goals. So our friends or colleagues, our family, we consider them a squad. And then uh, relationship goals. We have, uh, of course, for those who have been watching television, pop culture and such. And then other goals in life. And most of the time, uh, our goals in life might just be personal to us. Like for example, I want to graduate. I want to work at this. I want to give a comfortable life to my family. And those are okay. Uh, those are okay goals. But I, I have a question for those who, who might not have yet thought about it. So have we thought about what our goals are for our world, for our country, or for our community? So maybe some of us have already been thinking about it. And it's nice, actually, that people have been, uh, m most of the participants have, have already been saying their goals for their world, for their country, and for their community. But we will integrate it later and we will link it later on why our personal goals are important also towards achieving the sustainable development goals. Yeah, um, Manish, we will be answering that later. So, thank you. So now, of course, our main focus for today is the sustainable development goals. So, sorry. Okay. So the Sustainable Development Goals, its technical definition, it's launched in the year 2015 and it's a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. So that's the technical definition according to the UNDP. And uh, for those who want a copy of this presentation, we will be giving it to BIPLAB and the, the rest of the NexusN team and we hope they can send the copy to your respective emails or in our WhatsApp group. So that's the technical definition, but we know uh, some of us might get too technical about it. So again, we'll be using a series of analogies to further understand why we need to understand or why we need to know the essence of the sustainable development goals. So sustainable development goals are like your astrology. So uh, for those who here in the Philippines, for those for our, our Filipino attendees. So it's like astrology. So we have a free will to use it. And it's a guide. Uh, it's a guide that we can use. And aside from being, uh, being similar to astrology or astrologers, it's also similar to how tour guides are. So tour guides, we know some of us have, might have already experienced availing tour guides or for those who have it, might already know how and why tour guide works. So tour guides are like, of course, giving you a systematic framework. They already have systematic framework on how to give out information, on how to uh, give information to various landmarks, to various ideas. And this is similar on how the SDG works. Because SDGs, while some of it might deem optional, but if you avail of it or or if you understand it further, it helps you further, it, it helps us further systematically know what we can do to change the world, solve issues, and make a mark. So it's like a framework that we can use towards developing our respective communities and respective societies. So now, we know that we have different issues and we have different concerns happening in the world. So for example, the climate crisis. So we know it's really affecting us right now. Here in the Philippines, it's summer and it's really hot right now here in the Philippines. And then if it's cold, it's really cold. And then of course we know the coronavirus is still out there, still damaging a lot of industries, a lot of lives, and hopefully we can find a cure soon. 
And of course, we have different territorial disputes and even our respective issues in our respective communities and countries. So, for example, like the Philippines has its own problems. Nepal might also have its own problems. And other countries might have their respective problems as well. So, we have these different issues and dilemmas happening in our respective communities and societies. So, do you believe that our present and our future are on the line? Yeah, so again, do you believe that our present and our future are on the line? Okay, yes? Okay. Okay, feel free to say uh, your answers below. So, do you believe our present and the future? Okay, I think majority of us said yes, and it's nice, to be honest. Uh, but I think, uh, just to give an example, while majority of us said yes, there was this one time when I was doing this more frequently wherein we, we asked this question and they mentioned that it's, it's a no. Uh, one of the participants said it's a no. And he said that our present and our future are not on the line because we might not have a future if we do not act on it. So it's somehow a food for thought for us and we hope we need to to act in the present and we'll further understand why we need to act now also because it will really depend on our actions now for the future. So now, uh, because of that, our goals, the ones we have asked earlier, we might have our personal goals like to graduate, to work, to have a comfortable life, to fund our families, or to even like have a abundant life and other goals other personal goals. Our goals might just be goals forever if we do not do something for our community and for our world. So again, our goals might just be goals forever if we do not do something for our world or even for our community. So now, there are young individuals and groups who are already acting for the global goals. Okay. So first, of course, this is in Hong Kong. We know that the Hong Kong protests are still ongoing and there are a lot of protests still go going on despite the virus. And did you know that majority of the participants or the protesters of the Hong Kong protests are young people like you and me? Like ages 15 to 24. So majority of them go to class and then after that they go straight to the streets to fight for their future because they believe that their future is on the line. Second is the climate strike. So the climate strike is, of course, uh, being done and being uh, started by Greta Thunberg. So we'll be introducing her later. And there was this one time, a friend of mine told me uh, during the digital climate strike that we hope our global leaders and especially our respective national leaders will act on the climate crisis, on how they are currently responding to the coronavirus crisis. And then we have, of course, different various young individuals, both in the Philippines and Nepal and in other countries, who have been doing respective actions for their respective communities. So first is, of course, Greta Thunberg. We might already know her uh, on what she is doing to advocate for the environment and the climate. Second is Malala. Of course, Malala is a Nobel Peace Prize winner who sacrificed even her own life just to provide quality education for women and children. Third one is here in the Philippines. So this is Mayor Biko Soto. So he's one of our mayors and uh, he's a young mayor from one of the cities here in the Philippines. And he is a staunch advocate of freedom and of information and local governance. And last one, of course, this is... Uh, Amanda. So Amanda was a Vietnamese but now currently in states uh, in the United States and she is the founder of Rice. So she was a rape and harassment victim and she used this Rice, Rice as a platform to empower fellow victims of hers, uh, fellow victims of harassment and rape to stand up and believe that we have a, they have a voice and they can um, uh, they can fight for their rights because of course uh, we know how women embarrassment or women harassment is is a big issue. Okay. So there. Uh, but we still need more young people. We still need you. We still need uh, our friends, our colleagues, or even our families to act for the sustainable development goals. And this is a saying. 
from our national hero here in the Philippines that the, 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 the youth is the hope of the future. And there's something in us that the world needs. There's something in you, whether big or small, that the world can need. Whether it's a small action or a big action, there's something in us that we can contribute to the world. So now, of course, how can I contribute if I do not know about the Sustainable Development Goals? So again, the Sustainable Development Goals which were launched in the year 2015, and it's a universal call to action to protect the people uh, in poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. So I would like to answer one question from an anonymous attendee. And he, he or she asked that, First question, what is the difference between SDGs and MDGs? So the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, of course, there was a predecessor of it. I, I, I wasn't able to include in this presentation, but it's called the Millennium Development Goals. So it, it's similar. It's a 15-year plan also from the year 2000 to 2015. And then the Sustainable Development Goals is another 15-year plan from 2015 to 2030. So the difference of it is that the biggest difference of the SDGs and the MDGs is that the SDGs were only eight goals. Uh, the MDGs were only eight goals while the SDGs are 17. So we'll be introducing the 17 sustainable development goals in a bit. But uh, aside from that, majority of the SDG uh, Millennium Development Goals focus more on the developing countries. So it can include Asian, Asian countries and Afri majority Asian and African countries. But in the Sustainable Development Goals, they realize that all countries, despite its economic and social status, have their own set of concerns and goals. So that's why the SDGs are more inclusive, uh, more integrated, and more indiv indivisible. So aside from that, SDGs are also more uh, people-oriented. They got in the responses and the feedback from the respective member states towards building the Sustainable Development Goals. While the MDGs, on the other hand, were built by a group of researchers uh, to build the MDGs. So the SDGs, of course, there is still a group of researchers and professionals who finalize the crafting of the SDGs, but they highlighted the importance of the feedback and the responses from various member states. So there are publicly available documents. I can also share it to you that. So again, these are the three principles of sustainability. So again, this is social, economic, and environmental. One moment. Okay. So now, uh, these three pillars of sustainability are your basis to build the five pillars of the Sustainable Development Goals. So people, prosperity, peace, partnership, and planet. So now, I want to ask everyone, what do you notice in this picture? So again, I just want to ask everyone what they notice in this picture. So feel free to comment it down below. Yeah, of course, all of them are peace. Uh, it's a cycle, interconnected. It's like a lens of a camera. It's connected. Everything is linked, interrelation, five Ps. It's a puzzle. Okay, so I would like to use two analogies, analogies for this one. So first, uh, what Sydney has said, it's like a, it's a, it's like a puzzle. So if you see, if you have seen, each part is like a puzzle piece, and they are important. All of them are all in, important and integral towards building sustainable development. So remove one part or remove one pillar, it doesn't complement towards achieving sustainable development. So again. All of it are important and interconnected towards building a sustainable community for everyone by the year 2030. That's the first one. Second one, have you seen the one in the middle, the one that looks like a house with the word sustainable development in it? So it's, it also looks like a house or a home, especially the one in the middle. Why is that so? We know that in building a home, we need different foundations. And these five pillars serve as our foundations to attain the sustainable development goals or to attain sustainable development. So again, uh, we know we have different analogies, but I would like to use the two analogies I've just mentioned. So now, 
these are the 17 SDGs. So I know we have a short time, so I would like to just summarize everything one by one quickly and so that we can also proceed with the Q&A and we can also proceed with the next part of the program. So again, for more information about the Sustainable Development Goals, we'll be sending you links also on where to read more of it and such. So first, of course, is no poverty. No poverty, of course, aims to ensure that uh, no people must be poor enough. So there is a certain standard being met by the United Nations to ensure that people are not in living in extreme poverty anymore. It also talks about social protection systems and ensuring that they, uh, the people living in the poverty are protected during vulnerable situations, especially during, for example, disasters or even coronavirus like this or pandemics like this. SDG 2 is zero hunger. So zero hunger focuses on production of food, ensuring food are healthy, and ensuring we have uh, enough nutritious and sus uh, sustainable food for everyone. SDG 3 is good health and well-being. So it really mainly talks about, of course, our health care. So whether physical, mental, psychological, and other uh, even health facilities. And then aside from that, it also aims to lessen mortality on uh, child mortality from zero to five and also uh, aims to lessen lessen road damages and road incidents because of course we know how road incidents can affect a person's physical, mental, and psychological well-being. SDG 4 is quality education. So quality education of course aims to achieve and attain free, accessible, and quality education from the childhood to even your technical and vocational education. SDG 5 is gender equality. In definition or in context being used by the United Nations, right now, gender equality is more focused on highlighting and empowering women. So either ending uh, slavery, ending rape and harassment, and other gender-based violence, particularly pertaining to women. So that's the focus on SDG 5. But I know and we know that it's really important also to educate all genders to be more gender sensitive and to be more uh, towards attaining development. So SDG 6 is clean water and sanitation. So clean water and sanitation focuses that everyone must have a sustainable, accessible, and free water and sanitation. It also highlights the importance of hygiene and sanitation. Particularly, I believe hygiene and sanitation is really an integral part or an important part towards combating the coronavirus crisis. So SDG 7 is affordable and clean energy. So it's really direct. It aims to ensure that we have an affordable and uh, accessible types of clean energy, whether wind, solar power, and other types of uh, clean energy. SDG 8 is decent work and economic growth. So it aims to empower, of course, businesses. It aims also to empower labor, labor uh, entrepreneurs, um, micro, small, medium enterprises, and even uh, protecting labor rights and other uh, opportunities for our labor uh, employees and em employers. So SDG 9 is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So it's really focusing on, of course, industry. Innovation is, of course, research and development and ensure that there is a sustainable and accessible infrastructure for everyone. So we know we have been building a lot of infrastructures, but we need to ensure that the infrastructures that are being built whether by the government or we, whether by the private sector, are sustainable and inclusive to all communities. So SDG 10 is reduce inequality. So it aims to ensure that regardless of race, gender, religion, and other factors, everyone has a right and everyone must have access to various opportunities, whether education, health and well-being, housing and work, uh, water, sanitation, and other aspects. So SDG 11 is sustainable cities and communities. So it aims to, of course, provide sustainable and affordable housing. It also provides to 
it aims to protect uh, natural and cultural heritage. So SDG 12 is sustainable consumption and production. So SDG 12 aims to, of course, highlight the importance of waste management and also promoting sustainable lifestyles. SDG 13, of course, is your climate action. It aims to promote climate action measures. So integrating climate action frameworks towards respective communities and ensuring that we act something for our environment and for our climate. SDG 14 and 15 are similar with one another in a sense that SDG 14 aims to focus more on protecting our water resources and also the people who are protecting it. So for example, our fisher, fisher folks and such. While SDG 15 is more focused on protecting our land resources, our, bio, our biodiversity, and also protecting our foresters. SDG 16, of course, aims to highlight peace, justice, and strong institutions. So it aims to, of course, end violence, slavery, corruption, and bribery. It also aims to empower local governance, freedom of information, transparency, and accountability. And then last but not the least, SDG 17 is partnerships for the goals. So SDG 17 highlights the importance the, of the interconnectedness of one another, that we can't just focus on attaining one SDG without thinking of how it affects the other SDGs or how it affects, how our actions affect the other goals or the other aspects of the sustainable development goals. It also provides uh, focuses on data reporting and also research and development. So those are the 17 goals. Again, if you have questions, feel free to use Slido. Feel free also to comment it down in the Q&A portion of Zoom. Yeah, okay. I'll be answering more of it in a bit. Okay, so now, uh, I, I would like to answer, wait, I'll just check my time. I have five more minutes. So I would like to answer some questions as from the Q&A portion of Zoom. So again, first is from Micaela Cachillar Bugua. So her question was, can SDGs progress in this time of the pandemic? How? So I think this one is really tricky because there was a research recently being released by the United Nations wherein they highlighted how SDGs were affected because of the COVID-19 pandemic. While I think it really lag us right now. Uh, and it, the United Nations have already admitted it that it really disrupted their prog our progress in terms of attaining the sustainable development goals. So now, of course, after the pandemic is over, or at least uh, is down, it's now our responsibility to continue uh, progressing or to continue rebuilding towards attaining the sustainable development goals. Uh, next question is from Angela Pandey. Are efforts for sustainable development goals equal in every continent? What's the overall status in present? So I'll be answering that in a bit. <laughs> so uh, how can we achieve SDG if COVID-19 continues? So again, uh, I think it's a really coordination and collaboration. As mentioned a while ago when I was at answering Micaela Bogos' answer, it really disrupted us in terms of attaining the sustainable development goals. And it's now up to us to do collective actions and efforts towards rebuilding ourselves in attaining the SDGs and at the same time ending and combating the coronavirus. So I have like... Two more. What is the goal that we should prioritize first according to Eshel Paris? Actually, there is no priority SDGs. I know these are 17 SDGs and people might ask, why is SDG 1 no poverty? So the reason of why SDG 1 is no poverty is because they want to indicate that this is a continuation of the Millennium Development Goals because SDG 1, uh, MDG 1 was also ending poverty. So they want to ensure uh, they place as, uh, no poverty as the first sustainable development goal because of that. Uh, next question, there are so many plans and projects to reduce poverty in each country, but why is it still existing as number one problem in the world? 
So I believe, again, uh, poverty is caused by different aspects. If you have seen, it's really interconnected. You, we also need, when we are talking about poverty, we also need to talk about the other 16 SDGs, about your nutrition and hunger, your health, your education, equality, your clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, and other aspects. So again, uh, to end poverty, it's not only giving them social protection systems, but it's also ensuring that other sustainable development goals or, or other aspects are also being uh, met responsibly. Okay, so I think it's the same question. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll be answering more questions in a bit. But now, uh, I'm just using the Philippines as an example, but there's a research being done by the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. It's called the Sustainable Development Report. So it's an annual report being released by the, the institution wherein they analyze and they research what, where does each country rank in terms of attaining and implementing the sustainable development goals. And according to them, this is just for the Philippines, but again, you can search it online. So it's at sdgindex.org. So again, I'm typing it down now. So it's at sdgindex.org. And according to them, uh, these are the indicators. So the red one indicates that we still have major challenges. The orange one indicates that we still have still major challenges but already improved the yellow one means that we have minor challenges and the green one means that we have already attained the sdgs again we can visit sdgindex.org for more details so now before i end my presentation what can i do to act for sdgs yes i agree uh, dinesh the Philippines haven't achieved any, and I think not everyone has achieved anything. So it's still work in progress. I guess some of us have already attained minor achievements, but I, again, there's still a lot of work to be done, not only in the Philippines, but also in other countries. So going back, what can I do to act for the SDGs? So we can start in doing small actions. So again, some of us might already been doing a lot of big actions such as oh, like organizing an event like this, uh, organizing an organization or building an organization, mobilizing their fellow people or being elected in minor positions in the government. Those are big actions already. But not all of us have the comfort mm -hmm. to do big mm -hmm. actions as early as possible. So for some, we can do small actions first, and then let's make it a part of our routine. You can make it a part of your routine and do it daily. And then if we are already comfortable enough, that's the time we can do bigger actions. So again, uh, if we're more comfortable enough, we can already answer surveys and answer petitions. So again, as I mentioned, I am currently part of My World 2030. So it's an initiative by the UNDP, UN. SDG action campaign and UN volunteers to raise awareness action and advocacy for the sustainable development goals. And according to them, so this survey is being used uh, to collect the top six priority SDGs for us and for our respective families. And we hope that the people who get this data will be turning this over to governments and to other decision makers and encourage them to integrate these survey results to their respective policies and their respective initiatives. And according to them, these are the results. So I'll be showing three, one for world, one for Nepal, and one for the Philippines. So for the world, so we have almost 600,000 votes, and these are the top priority SDGs. So it's SDG 3, SDG 8, SDG 4, uh, SDG 5, SDG 6, and SDG 1. Here in the Philippines, we almost have only 5,000 votes, and these are the top six priority SDGs. So again, it's SDG 3, good health and well-being, quality education, no poverty, uh, decent working economic growth, climate action, and peace, justice, and strong institutions. And then here in Nepal, uh, in Nepal, we only have around 2,000 votes as of now, 
And these are the top six priority SDGs according to uh, Nepal. Uh, quality education, good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, no poverty, uh, gender equality, which is actually, uh, and so now we can encourage more of our people. After this, we can already join various surveys and initiatives. Okay, we can already join various uh, initiatives. There are some already on uh, online activations, so we can sign petitions and such. And then we can also join events both online and offline. I think a lot of us have been joining a lot of online events to raise awareness, our awareness, and even our action to act for the Sustainable Development Goals. And we hope uh, we have been learning a lot for this session. And then we can also join various organizations. So yeah, that's it. Uh, let's make it better and let's seal the world and make it a better place. So again, please answer the survey. Uh, I'll be posting the survey link below. I can also send the link to Biplab and the rest of the NextGen team. And I can also post it in our WhatsApp group. And then, yeah, please feel free to join our Telegram group. Uh, this is the official online SDG Youth Action Forum group. And then you can also join our Facebook group at Online SDG Youth Action Forum. And then you can also contact me. Uh, through email, so that marcasinto.official at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at marcasinto.official. Again, thank you so much and the rest of it. Hello. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Mark, uh, thank you for that uh, interactive session. I guess uh, all of us uh, have uh, a basic knowledge what, uh, about the understanding of sustainable development goals. Uh, and uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, so uh, before moving on uh, with uh, the webinar, some of our delegates have arrived and I'd like to introduce them as well to our uh, webinar. So uh, we have uh, Professor uh, Dr. Laxman Powdell, uh, Campus Chief of Kulchu Campus. Professor Dr. Jagannath Shrestha, former Director, Center for Energy Studies. Uh, Dr. Surendra Shrestha, Mr. Sanjay Nepani from Pulcho Campus, and uh, Ms. Moon Guru, Country Coordinator, UNDP Volunteer Program. Uh, so uh, without further delay, uh, I would like to uh, introduce Ms. Nigina Sodikova as our next guest speaker. Uh, she is a United Nations Volunteer Global Actions Ambassador and Coordinator for the Youths for the SDGs Project, an online forum for youth around the globe to share their SDG commitments with the world. She's also a member of uh, UN Youth Advisory Board and an SDG reporter in Uzbekistan. She also has been working as a national consultant of UNDP Uzbekistan. Uh, now, I'd like to open this floor to uh, Ms. Nigina Sodikova. Uh, Ms. Nigina, uh, can we please have you? Can you see me? Uh, yes, we can see you. Oh, good. So let us quickly check. Can you hear me, all of you? Yes. So I says, so we can start, I think. I'm starting using my time. Oh, so, we, so let us start. Uh, my name is Nigina Sadikova. I'm from Uzbekistan. It's Central Asia. Adra, oh, I'm so sorry. So let us start. Uh, my name is Nigina Sadikova. I am the United Nations volunteer, and at the same time, I'm the coordinator of uh, SDG Club. It's called the Use for SDGs. And I would like to share my own experience how to start um, acting to achieve the sustainable development goals, and what can you do being the young person in the world. So, uh, let me share my experience and then I will be really happy to talk to you to discuss these issues. So when I first became aware of SDGs, I was so motivated to do something. I was so 
uh, ready to do something to reach the SDGs, but I didn't know what to do. The thing that really motivated me is the dictum of United Nations for agenda 22 no one behind because people in these vulnerable situations uh they always left behind like people in poverty in different conflicts not only people in vulnerable situations but children youth women persons with disabilities they are always left behind so i really wanted to conduct something to organize the club that will highlight the leaving no one behind uh, so what is the aim of SDG club? The SDG club wants to aims to conduct the sessions and activities to promote and spread the SDG concept and knowledge among young people. But we didn't want the session with the teacher speaker who stand in front of the participants and speak. Okay. Okay, this is SDG, the 17 SDGs, and you have to know this, 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 this. We didn't deliver the information in a difficult form. We wanted the participants be the speakers. So we wanted each uh, participant of the sessions that we conducted uh, share their share their ideas about SDGs. So our first SDG session was like this: we have 17 goals. You can uh, look, you can look at the screen and you can see the 17 different SDGs. So can you tell us what do you think about them? Okay, SDG 1, no poverty. Can you tell what do you think? Uh, uh, it makes some noise. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, so, and we like show it. We, we said, okay, we have the SDG one. Can you tell us what do you think about the SDG one? Can you tell us what do you understand under no poverty? And people started sharing their ideas and we listened to hundreds and hundreds different ideas about no poverty, about SDG one. And the same with everything. So after the session, I saw. Uh, so after the session, I saw many many young people. They were really motivated, and we, they have really shiny eyes because uh, all of them, they found themselves in SDGs because all of them they had an opportunity to share their ideas, to share their uh, opinion about SDGs. Uh, so what do we conducted many many sessions for different young people uh we in, we included young people from rural areas not only from cities uh we included hiv people and persons with disabilities and the most important thing here is to highlighting how can we teach young people to respect all of them and how can we live in a common world, in a common society, in a common community. That's the main thing we wanted to highlight with our SDG club, leaving no one behind. So uh, we conducted the SDG sessions to show the importance of each young person in the world, that each of them, each young person has the ideas that make them be unique in the society. And we wanted to show that each young person is the best version of himself and herself uh, that can be the, the change maker of his society, of his or her society and community. So we started working with young people. And another thing that uh, we implemented is not a single country and not a single individual can reach uh, something, can change, can bring some uh, some international changes alone. So of course we have to cooperate. That's the second thing that we highlighted. And I want to share one more experience. You may ask, how can we uh, 
reach the SDGs, being just a young person, uh, having no financial support, and etc. So the only thing that you need is that you want to live with SDGs, that, we, that you want to share the SDGs and you want to change others' lives. That's the main thing. My manager, when I first uh, came to the United Nations, he invited me to join the project uh, that has the, that wanted to tackle with the in environmental issues. Uh, so it was the plugin event. I would like to uh, ex explain what is the plugin event. Plugin event is the event when you come to some place and start picking up the rubbish. Uh, so uh, we, we came to the park um, and we start cleaning the park. We were walking around and picking the rubbish we made on, we made on our uh, road. We, let, we spent around 30 minutes to do so and and at the end, my manager, he, uh, he asked, so can you explain me what we did now? Did we clean the world? Did we clean the country? Or did we clean our city? Or even did we clean the park with our actions? No, we cleaned somewhere here. So after the event, I uh, changed my lifestyle. I changed my attitude to waste and the rubbish. And after the event, coming back home, I met one person who uh, threw the rubbish on the street. And you cannot even imagine that I automatically picked up the rubbish, automatically. And with my actions, uh, I changed his life. My manager changed my life, how to be responsible for consumption. And, uh, with my actions that I pick up the rubbish on the street and threw it in an appropriate place, I changed the, the life of the person who threw the rubbish. To tell you, don't think that you don't have any resources or place or something to reach the SDGs. Uh, the only thing that you need is that, that you wish and that you want to live with SDGs because SDGs are everywhere. And if you want to find them, you can easily find yourself in SDGs because SDGs are your goals, goals. your friends' goals, your family's goals, are everyone's goals. So uh, don't, think that, uh, don't think that you are not enough to achieve the SDGs. So if you change one's life, if you change one person's lifestyle and make them living in SDGs, that is enough. You can be really, really proud of yourself that you did it. The, that's the thing that I wanted to tell you. So be yourself, love yourself, accept yourself and ex ex accept your ideas and opinion about the SDGs and spread them with your actions. And you will see that you will connect different people. So, and of course, don't forget to copyright and collaborate, don't discriminate. Uh, leave leave no one behind yes it's our really important uh, phrase that we have so and you will see that we are really interconnected that we live in a common community and all challenges around the world we are facing they're really really connected and we need each each young person with different different ideas with different opinion because each of them are is really unique and uh, change maker of the world. So I think I finished. Thank you so much for your opinion. Mm, if you have some questions, I will be really happy to answer them. Uh, okay, thank so you. I, uh, okay, so thank you uh, so much. Miss uh, Nigina, uh, it was indeed a wonderful experience getting connected with the story. I hope it will impact a lot on our audience. So uh, as we move forward, uh, we have a question and answer session uh, where we will be entertaining about uh, 10 to 15 questions from the audience. So uh, uh, the room is open and the audience, Thank please you. feel free to drop your questions. Uh, so yeah. uh, meanwhile, uh, just open. Yeah. Okay. I've been so, reading uh, actually already questions. Sorry, I've been reading questions already uh, during 
uh, Nijina's speech, maybe, yeah, I want to answer some already. Uh, okay, Mr. Mack, uh, we'll be or moving forward with the questions. So, uh, but uh, before the questions, uh, there is an interactive session with our audience. So uh, I, uh, I would uh, put up the question to the audience about uh, the experience they have been facing during the lockdown and what are they doing these days uh, to keep uh, themselves engaged during this lockdown. So anyone from the audience, please feel free to uh, like raise, uh, raise your hands or leave a reaction. And please feel free to share uh, uh, whatever you have been doing during this uh, lockdown period. So uh, the room is open for the audience. Uh, we can, can we have some reactions from the audience? Uh, so I guess uh, uh, I guess no one is uh, willing to uh, give some of the experience uh, as of now. So uh, I guess we will be uh, continuing with this uh, after the question and answer. So please uh, feel free to uh, like raise your hands, and we'll be continuing this after the question and answer. So uh, we'll be moving forward uh, with the question and answer uh, for now, and we'll be continuing uh, this session uh, after the question and answer. So uh, uh, for the question and answer, I will be putting some of the questions that have been posted here, as well as in the link that have uh, been shared in the WhatsApp group. And uh, anyone from our speaker, uh, either Mr. Mark or Ms. Nidina, if you'd like to answer, uh, you can proceed with the question. Uh, is it okay? Yeah, good. Let's go. Uh, okay, sure. So, uh, uh, my first question is uh, from Mr. Arnaldo Legaxi. Uh, so, he asks, how sure are we that we are already on our way towards the 2030 SDGs? Pardon? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, how sure are we that so, we are uh, already on our way towards... Yes. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned a while ago, thank you for so much for, for that question, Arnaldo. As mentioned already a while ago, we have different data and research already about our uh, progress and accomplishment towards attaining the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Again, as mentioned, you can check out uh, the SDG index. That also other reports being done by respective uh, economic planning teams. So, for example, here in the Philippines, we have the National Economic and Development Authority who oversees the implementation and the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals being done by the departments here in the Philippines. So, yeah. And then we can also, of course, approach our respective local governments. Uh, okay, uh, Miss Nidina, would you like to add some? Yes, I'm here. I am so sorry, I'm a little confused about to try to find it, but cannot. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I repeat the questions again. So it Thank says, uh, how sure are we that we are already on our way towards the uh, 2030 Sustainable Development Goals? I am so sorry. It's really bad connection, internet. I lose you all the time. 
and in interrupting your speech, I cannot clearly understand. Uh, okay, uh, I'd like to repeat the question again. So it says that. <laughs> question. Uh, how sure are we that we are already on our way uh, towards the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals? Yeah, I think she got disconnected. But I think there's a function by Zoom wherein the panelists like me and Nagina can answer it like by typing. Maybe she can just type her answer there also as well to save time. Can you, what do you, think? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. I can hear you. Oh, really good. So <laughs> I'm so sorry for this internet. Um, what can I say? I think you heard about the, the project called Decade of Action that was launched this year because only 10, 10, le 10 years left. Um, of course, it depends. It depends on each person's lifestyle. Um, I read many questions on this. Uh, you were asked how can this or this affect the, the, the achievement of SDGs. I can tell you one thing, of course, it's really difficult, but it is the phrase. If you cannot change the society you are living, change your attitude to live in the society. So if you cannot uh, change the society you are living, you're, they are living in really bad conditions. They are doing everything wrong. And uh, you cannot change the whole society because they are the only one. The only thing that you can do is change your attitude to do. So you have to create your own society. And uh, <clears throat> the thing that I would like to tell you is that just be responsible for your lifestyle. Uh, be responsible for your actions you are doing. That's really enough. You cannot affect, you cannot influence other people to do something. But with your actions, with your attitude and your lifestyle, you can show how people can be and how people with, your, with their actions can reach the target of SDGs. The SDGs, that's the main thing. And that's, that is enough, I think. So I believe that uh, some targets will be uh, reachable uh, if we connect, if we collaborate with each other, with unique, unique, unique young people that who has the different, different ideas and opinion around the world. Um, their opinions are really valuable. And I think that if we connect and highlight each person, uh, we can, of course, achieve the SDGs. Thank you. Uh. Thank you, Ms. Nagina. So uh, moving forward uh, with uh, next question. So uh, the question is from uh, Gillian Alcantara. Uh, okay, it says, what will happen now if we achieve or at least see uh, major changes in our society with the guide of the SDGs? Uh, what are the next plans? Uh, okay, so either Mr. Mark or Ms. Nagina, uh, you may answer this. Okay. Yeah, I would like to answer it uh, on my own first. So thank you so much again, Julian, for answering uh, for asking that question. So uh, what are the next plans? I guess uh, it's really now our responsibility to make it more consistent because there are some projects or there are some initiatives that are just being done one time and then there are no follow-ups to it. Again, uh, in order for us to be sustainable, we need to at least do it multiple times or at least have a more sustainable framework or a more sustainable plan in achieving it. So we need to uh, do consistent monitoring and, and see if these are effective or not. So we have different guides and we have different tools that we can use. Uh, I can also share it to you. I have like a folder wherein uh, all files regarding the SDG, including SDG monitoring and implementation are there. Uh, Ms. Nidina, would you like to add some? If you if you repeat the question, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, the question says, uh, so, uh, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry.
I'm I'm very sorry. Like I've uh, missed the question, okay. so the question is not yet. So we'll be moving forward uh, with the new question. Okay. okay. So uh, my okay. question uh, is: uh, If no poverty is completely implemented, then does it mean zero hunger has also been achieved, uh, Miss Nigina? Uh, uh, the question is for Miss Nigina. So it says, <coughs> if uh, no poverty is completely implemented, then uh, doesn't it mean zero hunger has also been achieved? Um, really good question. Actually, I was attending the conference conducted with uh, Jeffrey Sachs. He is the advisor of uh, Secretary Generals, <coughs> United Nations Secretary Generals. Um, he told us that. Uh, of course, the SDGs yeah. are really interconnected and uh, interdependent with each other. We cannot highlight one of them. But the main goal uh, all around the world is no poverty. Uh, because poverty affects and influences uh, many aspects. Uh, let's try to highlight that um, can we imagine the country with really, really poor conditions, people living in the poverty? talk about other can they think about their health their well-being their education uh, is there any yeah. issue about gender equality or just other inequalities or just uh, employment and other issues so is, as you can see the poverty affects many many other SDGs uh, and it's really important once you achieve the, the SDG one no poverty it will automatically affect the other SDGs you you will see the improvement yes. but we cannot say, say for sure about the zero hunger because zero hunger uh, not cover all um, not covers um, the issues that you are hungry it covers about um, the food you are cons consuming is it really uh, good for you um, is it uh, like how to say it um, not damaging your life so of course it will affect somehow not only zero hunger but other SDGs as well yeah. but we cannot say for sure uh, at what level it is and it depends of course on each individual in each country I think thank you uh, thank you, Ms. Yeah. Nakina. Uh, Mr. Mark, would you like to add something? Uh, I think it's okay. We're good. Uh, we can proceed with the next question. I agree with what uh, Nikina what has said. Uh, okay, so uh, the next question is, uh, are the SDG goals uh, being achieved even during the COVID-19 pandemic? already answered this a while ago. So as mentioned, uh, yeah, the coronavirus disease has really affected how uh, the SDGs or the system Uh, Mr. Mark? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, I've already answered it a while ago during the presentation. Oh, okay. Hello. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, I understood you. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, so uh, um, the next question is, uh, the presence of conformity and orthodox will really hinder us to achieve social development. Even awareness will be really difficult. So what can be a remedy for that? Hello, what's the question Hello? again? Hello, can yeah, you what's hear the me? question? Yeah, uh, what's the okay, question so, uh, again? Uh, the question is uh, the presence of conformity and unorthodox will really hinder us to achieve social development. Even awareness will be really difficult. So, what can be a remedy for it? Hmm. Uh, maybe Nagina can answer it first. Hello. Uh, okay, sure. Hello. If you, if could you t 
could you tag this uh, question on the chat, please? I think you, we have. Uh, there. We both I think the question was. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can. I think I can answer now. Okay. So I think uh, the press. Of course, we know that conformity is really there, especially those who have more privilege and more uh, more comfort in their lives. And they think that, oh, okay, I'm already comfortable. Why do I need to care for the people who, who I'm not really concerned with? Again, it goes back in the interrelation and interconnectedness. And it goes back to remedizing or providing education and understanding the essence and the context. Because all of us can contribute one way or another as long as we understand why are we doing it or why we need to help or why do we need to contribute because some of us like we just say oh we need to do this uh we need to do like the uh, we need to help we need to help but we don't let other people including ourselves understand why we need to do this or why we need to do that so i think education is really a key and under uh, communication is also another key to uh to answer this dilemma Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, Ms. Nina, would you like to add some more? Uh, no, I think it's enough. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. So, uh, now we'll be uh, uh, entertaining about uh, two to three questions more. So, before we move on to the next session. So, uh, the next question is, uh, what is the gravest opposition or uh, challenge we are faced with regarding achieving the SDCs? Uh, Mr. Mark, Ms. Nidina. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what's your question again? Uh, what is the gravest opposition or challenge we are faced with regarding achieving the SDCs? Maybe Nidina can answer first. Okay, the challenges, um, the challenges that we face. Oh, the first thing that I would like to tell you is, what do, you, why do you think that um, uh, if you want to achieve the SDGs, you have to achieve some of the targets of SDGs? What do you think? Why do you think so? So the SDGs are really, really, uh, the SDGs are really huge issue, and. If you just spread the knowledge about the SDG, it is also the reaching SDG. So it is also living in SDG. So why do you think that you have to do some really, really great actions to reach the SDGs? Why do you think that you have to feed poor or hunger, uh, hungry people to reach the target? No, no. Um, of course, it's my opinion. I don't want to tell for all of them, but I think that the the only thing that you have to do for now, being just young person and being just activist, and trying to find for for uh, firstly yourself in SDGs and finding and trying to explain the SDGs in a different different words for other people. That's the main thing. So the Achieving SDGs also lies on that people can find themselves in SDGs. And if you can do so, that's the main thing. You, you can consider yourself as a hero that helped to change the person's life. Because SDGs are everywhere, everywhere. Not about, um, uh, not about the poverty uh, about this. So we are talking about the achieving SDGs being young people in the world. Uh, if some country, if the young people in some countries, they have resources and they have financial support or the, the support from different international national organizations, other people, um, other young people from different countries, they may not have the access for this. So the most important thing now for us and for young people is trying to achieve the SDGs having nothing on our hands, having nothing. So uh, the main, important thing is that uh, if you start believing in a lifestyle of SDGs and you if you uh, act in the SDGs uh, having nothing 
uh, and affecting with your attitude, with your activities, other young people. That's the main thing. You can consider yourself as a hero who, who is achieving the SDGs. Uh, that's my opinion because, of course, the United Nations and national organizations they are copywriting, um, uh, like they are copywriting to reach the SDGs on a national level, uh, on a country level. So your role as a young people is um, motivating young people know about us to know about the SDGs, to be aware of SDGs, and um, to act in the frame of SDGs uh, with your actions and I think that's and now what about the challenges okay the challenge I am not uh, in uh, implementing the SDGs is just that many young people in my country they don't they don't know about the SDGs they have no idea about the SDGs and uh, they cannot uh, clearly understand where the SDGs that's why I implemented the SDG club to show them that the sustainable development goals are not something really difficult or something international or national that only international organizations and government they can um, achieve them no everybody can achieve because it's everybody's uh, goals and the only thing that you should do i'm repeating again and again is living with sdgs is acting in the frame of sdgs that's why uh, every, everything is possible. In, even if you are just living in SDGs, acting in the frame of SDGs and like cons consuming responsibly or doing something or just studying and motivating others to study, start to study, you can consider yourself as a person who is implementing to achieve the SDGs. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Nikina. So uh, I think we are receiving a lot of questions. Uh, unfortunately, we would not be able to uh, address all of them. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll be addressing uh, about two more questions. Uh, okay, so the next question is, uh, uh, well, in field of gender equality and equity, uh, the third gender or other communities are still marginalized, dominated and discriminated. Uh, being deprived from social inclusion uh, is sustainable development goal concern for them uh, mr mark uh, yes uh, again it's mentioned in sdg5 uh, sdg5 is more focused on women but it's also in in context technically it's, it's also included in sdg5 and it's also included in sdg10 which is reduce inequalities so yeah, uh, of course the third gender and even other genders and even other religions, races and other uh, minorities are included uh, in SDG 10, which is really empowering and reducing inequalities because we understand that these types of uh, contexts need to be empowered also and they also deserve the rights that uh, they also need have the, these rights and opportunities for them and we shouldn't discriminate them because of that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mark. So uh, this is the last question for today's question and answer session. So uh, how crucial do you think is to accept vegetarianism and minim uh, minimalism as a remedy for curing climate change? Uh, Mr. Mark? Yeah, again, sorry, what's the question? I'm looking for the question. Uh, okay, so it says, how crucial do you think is to accept vegetarianism and minimalism as a remedy for curing climate change? Oh, uh, to be honest, I am not really the expert with regards of knowing minimalism and veganism or vegetarianism. But I know from what my colleagues and partners have said to me regarding this topic, this is really important as well. Because, of course, we know that uh, lessening our production or lessening our eating of meat or, or uh, eating animal-based food also helps of course uh in in contributing towards climate action but again uh, i'm not really the best 
person with regards to this topic? Uh, okay, so at last. Uh, of course, it is spiritual. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Mark. So, uh, Ms. Nagina, uh, if you'd like to add some. I am totally agree with Mr. Mark. I'm not just expert on this uh, issue as well. Uh, okay, so thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, with this, uh, we've come to conclude the question and answer session. So I would like to uh, put forth uh, the last interactive activity again. So uh, I would like to uh, present to the audience uh, to uh, present to the audience to share their experience if they are having uh, regarding this lockdown. So uh, you can uh, raise your hand and we will be unmuting you and you can share your experience. So anyone from the audience, uh, please feel free to uh, raise your hand and uh, share your experience. Okay, so uh, we have uh, Mr. Vinchen wrapped in. So uh, you uh, please, uh, you can start. Uh, hello everyone, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Rinchen Rabdin and I'm from Bhutan and I'm a student. Uh, currently, you know, in my country, we are not completely uh, following lockdown, but uh, we are advised by the Minister of Health and by the government of Bhutan to stay at home and to practice social distancing and physical distancing. So what I do is usually I stay at home only. And as I'm a student, I have the online classes to attend. So morning hours, I usually attend online classes. Afternoon, if there is such webinars, I attend webinars and all. And for time being, I'm uh, spending my time on some online courses like courses from the Coursera, from Udemy and all. That's all what I'm doing. Thank you everyone for listening and thank you uh, next, next gen for uh, thank you, Mr. opportunity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, so we have uh, next uh, Ms. Anushka Kharka. So uh, uh, please unmute her. Uh, Ms. Anushka, you can begin. I'm Anushka Kharka from Nepal. Um, right now in this lockdown, uh, it's already been two months since our country has declared lockdown. And uh, um, in the beginning of lockdown, I was actually very enthusiastic. I thought I would do many online classes. I would do many things, but now it's getting quite boring to be true. But in our country, especially in Kathmandu area, where I live, the capital, the cases have gone up of coronavirus and it, it's a very disastrous situation in a few of the places. So I am a medical student. So in this lockdown, I have come up with a plan with a few of my friends. We're actually making pamphlets of hand hygiene and we're spreading it online to our friends. And being a medical student, I'm also urging people to ask as many questions as they want. We're making a kind of general platform so they can ask questions that we can give them authentic answer because um, in the internet in Facebook and Instagram there are many wrong and fake news that's going around about coronavirus and how they can protect themselves so that's all I'm doing so if anyone has got any better ideas of how I can use my lockdown I'll be very happy to um, you know get some ideas and thank you so much for organizing this platform of SDG I came to know a lot thank you guys that's all bye and stay safe. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Anushka. I think it indeed is a wonderful utilization of time. So uh, next is uh, Ms. Sila. So uh, uh, could you uh, please unmute her? So hi. Uh, Ms. Sheila. Yes, you can begin. Um, okay. I am Sheila Eskasha from the Philippines, and I am a member of Youth Advocates for the Philippines. So I started um, being an advocate for mental health awareness on the May, uh, on the first week of May, I guess. And um, I was uh, during this lockdown. I have a lot of um, activities wherein I go to seminars and 
online workshops uh, with the TESDA online training courses. And I've been active with the service as well, um, spiritual services like that. And I think this is a great opportunity for me to have um, good time with my family too as well, wherein we cannot usually spend more time with them if ever we are having the um, school. And I think this is a great opportunity to have this kind of uh, um, seminar. Uh, Thank you. And stay safe, everyone. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Sheila. So uh, now I'd like to uh, move on with some of our delegates. Uh, I would like to, uh, I would uh, like to put forth this question to Ms. Moon Guru, uh, our delegate, uh, country, uh, country coordinator, UNDP UN uh, volunteer program. Uh, Ms. Moon Guru, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Susan. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome. Yes, Moon, uh, Ms. Moon, uh, you can begin. Uh, I, w I would like to ask, like, what do you want to hear from me? Sorry about that. Uh, like, uh, it's about how you are utilizing your time during this uh, lockdown period. Oh, my God. That's a, that's a very interesting question because lockdown has changed nothing for me. Uh, work has been going so fast and so smooth because uh, of the online connectivity and all. We are uh, very much engaged in different activities. New opportunities are coming up and uh, we, are, we are engaging in different um, uh, groups. We are working with you, young people. As you know, UN Volunteers is uh, uh, an organization. UNV is an organization where young people can work with us uh, as uh, volunteers. Uh, we have online platforms. I was about to write in the chat that anybody who's interested, whether you are Nepali or whether you're an international, you can join our online platforms. You can join our uh, our databases, and uh, we are utilizing a lot of youths because uh, in the COVID situation, what has happened is uh, people are not able to travel. So there has been a lot of opportunities which is coming up for uh, people who have uh, different kinds of backgrounds like IT, um, uh, your MNE research, data management. So uh, it is uh, very, uh, I would say like a, a time where young people will be required because a lot of us have not uh, do not have as old people we do not have much of IT knowledge or social media knowledge so just for your information recently we have mobilized around uh, 300 plus volunteers um, who are helping us for uh, raising awareness for COVID. And uh, these young people, they have been using their social media and uh, have been uh, sharing information about what are rumors, what are informations which needs to be shared for maintaining uh, safety. We are also uh, doing sessions on mental health, which is providing, and we are also requesting people. So if any one of you, uh, especially Nepalis, interested to join the awareness campaign, uh, please do uh, contact us or do uh, look into our websites and those who are internationals who would want to be associated with UNVs uh, for example like in Philippines Myanmar's everywhere from where you are you do have a UNV office in those countries and also you can come into the online and support anywhere you would want so lots of opportunities are coming up people so just look into what you can contribute and uh, I think uh, when one door closes new opportunities come so with COVID uh, as um, like I am, uh, I shared um, work is going great, uh, but it is also giving us an opportunity to uh, be connected with our family more. So, for example, right now I uh, I have ten people uh, in my families. Like we used to like all live scattered, but now because of COVID, we all are staying together. So the family bonding, which is increasing, is amazing. So we do our, uh, we are realizing like um, not only the good times, but we are also facing challenging times but we are learning from that. Thank you, over. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Okay, so thank you, Ms. Munguru. Uh, it was really wonderful listening to your experience. So uh, as we are uh, running uh, short of time, so uh, uh, I'd be entertaining about uh, two, uh, two, uh, two answers more, then we'll be moving on with uh, next session. So uh, the next, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Surendra Swesta uh, to share his experience during lockdown. Uh, 
Uh, Dr. Surendra Swester, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, in lockdown period, we are in, uh, we can meet all of this world by webinar, this situation. We are in very hard situation nowadays. And still, our student and this group did the international conference is very nice and then very good uh, information sharing to all of uh, the world and the situation. And we hope uh, uh, this situation will be uh, complete. Uh, this situation will be down near soon. But this uh, situation where scientists and researchers will say it is a, it, it will go longer and longer but hope to full uh, we hope it, it will be uh, clear or it will be uh, going through very stuff very quickly let's hope and this pandemic uh, the whole economy as well as all other things going down at the same time we have to do very uh, many things just like you did ngn group this is very nice we hope uh, this makes a little bit uh, a medicine to all our uh, student and all our of the world this listener to give uh, to spend the time uh, well thank you for uh, to me to give uh, this uh, uh, to talk to his speech a uh, few words for me thank you very much organizer thank you uh, thank you dr uh, so uh, uh, now the last uh, last experience sharing uh, as uh, for now would be uh, mr julian so somebody please uh, unmute uh, julian uh okay so uh, mr julian you can begin hi hello i'm jill from the philippines uh okay so for this quarantine i've been um attending a lot of webinars especially uh, the ones concerning the SDGs because uh, two of my, two of the advocacy I prioritize are the 8 and 12. So uh, while I'm still waiting for the results of my college entrance examination, I'm capacitating myself with the information and knowledge on the issues and solutions and current uh, affairs in concerning the SDGs and the uh, um, events in my country. And um, with the college entrance examination results, I'm also concerned about the, uh, I'm also concerning about the online classes here in the country because it's still been an issue. So um, I'm joining Petition, signing petition to uh, find, so that the our Department of Education here will find better solutions for it. And I'm also one of the ways that I was able to widen my knowledge and perspective on this is by becoming a member of the Youth Advocates for the Philippines. So I'm I want to say hi to uh, Sheila, who also shared a while ago. So uh, that would be all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, I'm sorry, like I took uh, you for Mr. Julian. I'm sorry for that. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, as we are running short of time, uh, we would not uh, be able to address uh, more of uh, the experience sharing. So we're moving forward uh, with our next session. So I would like to uh, invite uh, my co-host, uh, Ms. Apiksha. Uh, to lead forward with the session, uh, Ms. Apeksha. Uh, Apeksha, uh, sorry. Uh, the floor is open. 
Namaste, hello. I'm Opex Ragimire. I think everyone perceives the information about sustainable development goals and somehow get motivated by its goals and targets. Now I request everyone to, to, to turn on your video if it is possible. We are here to commit few words. Please keep your right hands on your left chest and I request everyone to repeat the words after me. I promise to support United Nations to accomplish sustainable development goals either by planting five plants or feed to hungry people or love to animals or make some donation to charities and following the three R rules that is reduce, reuse and recycle. Thank you. Now I request some of our participants to put your words on what could be your contributions to fulfill sustainable development goals. Any interested minds can raise their hand. Okay, I will select random participant to put your view on these questions. What could be your contribution to fulfill sustainable development goals? Eric Alois, would you mind to give your view on this question? Zui Jhab, would you mind giving the answer of the question? I think none of us are ready to give the answer about these questions. I would like to give one. Okay, please continue. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Akash from Nepal. And uh, today I committed that this year, in 2020 when the lockdown ends, I will uh, move to some countryside and plant around 20 trees there and uh, tell the local people to water them regularly so that they could grow. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, would you like to answer ab about this question? None of us? Our participants are ready to give an answer. Yeah, uh, I think we can repeat the question and then if ever they can't raise, raise their hand, maybe they can just comment it below. Because <laughs> I think uh, some of them don't have like microphone access since we are in a webinar mode. Yeah, maybe we can repeat the question and then ask them to comment down, I guess. Yeah. What could be your contribution to fulfill sustainable development goals? Yeah, okay. So I guess for my end, uh, but again, the question is what would be our, am I right? What would be our contribution to attain the sustainable development goals? So for yes. those, I guess, for the participants and attendees, they can put their answers in the comment section. But for my end, I guess it's really more of continuous 
like this, like webinars like this. But uh, aside from that, doing action, of course, outside. And uh, maybe, again, we can start contributing to the SDGs by doing small actions and initiatives. So again, as I mentioned a while ago, if we are more comfortable enough, that's the time we can elevate our actions. So again, uh, if I guess they can comment down also their answers in the chat group. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Rosie Tomang, would you mind to give the answer about this question? Uh, yes, thank you, Apicha community. Uh, uh, first of all, hello everyone. I'm Rosie Tamang from Nepal. Uh, uh, since I have been working in the SDGs uh, before also as I'm the member of the Scouts and I have been involving in different leadership development programs and from where I came to know about the SDGs programs and I have been working on that. And this time we have been working on the gender equality uh, we have been working on gender equality and uh, along with the collaborations of the UN Women and the uh, World Associations of the Girl Guides and Girls Scout, we are working on the Stop the Violence activities and this year we are going to continue the same activities uh, to support the SDGs programs and along uh, these programs we have been working on different other activities also like um, in environmental in awareness programs, which awareness programs regarding the climate change and so on. Thank you. If anyone is interested to give view on these questions, then please. Raise your hand. Rogar Garcia, would you mind giving the answer of this question? Hello. Hello. Um, Hello, please go ahead. Okay, I am Roger R. Garcia from the Philippines. I am an educator and here I am a teacher, a public school teacher. So one of our projects that we, that I founded is the Project ASHA. The Project ASHA stands for a Sustainable Youth Advocacy, wherein there are four categories. There are about the life on land, about the climate change actions, water resources, and life existing programs. Those are anchored from the SDG 13, 14, and 15. So luckily, our Project won various um, var various awards as well because of this initiative, and this is these initiatives are coming from the students. And as a teacher, I am just their their you know their mentor to guide them for having this kind of activities and. This SDG really gives our, to, to protect our environment, not only environment, but in all aspects. As they've said, though, that a sustainable development goal should be completed. Big, and it should be, it should be, you know, um, it should be followed by the different, the different actions, not only by the youth, but also for the community. As we all know, we are, as one and as one nation. Thank you, that's all. Thank you so much. Now I request Ms. Santa Adhikari to give her words. Well, am I audible to you? Yes, you are. 
Okay, thank you, all the organizer team, uh, for hearing me. And um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself, Rishmi Shandhya Adhikari. And uh, since one and a half year, uh, I have been involved and working as an Ecogen ambassador as the UNEP Tunda Eco Generation from Nepal. And uh, uh, as uh, Tunza Eco Generation is an eco networking platform, so uh, from that time I'm so much concerned on environment, and currently I'm just planning to collaborate with many organizations and work on that sustainable development goal that is goal number 13. And uh, since then, I have uh, conducted many. Um, awareness camping at various school level and to various uh, youth and children around my reach and my future plans are i'll uh, i'll be conducting that uh, keep keeping in view about that five r principle that is recycle reuse rethink and rejuvenate our ideas for the sustainable development goal and um, on various um, on various uh, environmental day or some of the um, mark day i will be conducting and my every work will be in favor of the environment and uh, after soon uh, the lockdown ends i will be involved in various organization and i'll conduct a climate strike program which is also one of my project and resolution plan and that much thank you Okay, so I guess uh, Apeksha is encountering some problem. So I will take uh, the session forward. So up next, uh, we'd like to put forth uh, Ms. Sunidhi Amatya. Uh, Ms. Sunidhi, uh, you can start. Uh, Ms. Sunidhi, can you hear me? You can begin. Hello. Yes, uh, you can start. I'm sorry, my mic was being uh, mute for quite a while. Uh, it's, it's, um, okay. so, it's okay. Uh, hello, I'm Sunidhi Amate from Nepal, and uh, I have recently joined a program by UNDP called the Youth Exchange Program in Thailand. And before that, I used to think that ST is all about be doing the big things or doing something that we should be involved with big organization but after being a part of the uh, APY program in Thailand I understood that it's all about the small things you can even contribute a small thing and be a part of STZ goal so uh, my contribution I'm thinking of before uh, as before I have been participating in giving the sessions to the children in quality education and gender equality since I'm an engineer and a girl and the uh, and the number of calls in of engineers in my country is very less. So I have been guiding this mainly the female students about the possibilities of the engineering or any technical field in Nepal. So they are quite aware from their uh, youth level or from the beginner level. And also I'm planning to do some thing regarding the action, climate action. So I have begun uh, doing this by planting many plants around my house and my locality in this uh, lockdown period. Yes, these are the things that I want to contribute to the STC school from now. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for the session as well to hold the next team. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Sunidhi. Uh, we are really indebted uh, for this opportunity as well. Okay, so uh, we'll be entertaining about uh, two more uh, experience sharing uh, before we uh, move on to the next uh, feedback session and uh, the final closing. So up next, uh, I'd like to request uh, Sonam Pelden from Bhutan. So uh, Sonam, uh, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, yes, uh, you can start. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Sonam Pelden from Bhutan and I'm studying in one of the university in my college. And I'm also a rover scout. Uh, we have, actually we have planned so many activities to do for this semester. 
in our robot unit, but due to the global pandemic, we were not able to do any of the activity due to uh, closing of the colleges. Now, what I would like to do is after reopening the college, we may not get uh, much time to complete all of our plant activities, but I would like to focus on one activity that is a plantation of bamboos beside one of our hostel, uh, which is in the landside prone, prone area. And that is the contribution I can make to uh, do make in the implement of SDG group. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sunam. Okay, so at last uh, for the sharing, uh, I'd like to request uh, Mr. Avas Thapa. Uh, you can start. Hello, everyone, and namaste. I'm Avas Thapa. Yes, Are you, uh, you can begin, Avas. Uh, yes, I'm yeah. listening. Hello, no, and namaste. I'm Avas Thapa. Thank you for accepting me for this webinar. And I have been working for Nepal Red Cross as a youth activist and seeing you all from Nepal so actively involved in youth activity. I am very glad and surprised. And thank you once and once again for everyone for this opportunity. And as, uh, as you guys as I have asked me, what would I like to do after uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this coronavirus virus pandemic? I would like to donate a few money uh, from my salary for the needy as uh, the global uh, crisis is above us. And I would like to raise awareness uh, about the use of three R, that is reduce, recycle, and reuse in life. Uh, for, those, uh, those, for those people who are using those plastic even now, uh, as the uh, climate, uh, climate change is, is above us, and it is really destroying our world. And I will, as I am, as, Uh, hello, Mr. Abbas, are you there? Uh, so I guess we lost connection with uh, Mr. Abbas. So up next, uh, and the last uh, experience sharing will be from uh, Mr. Sushil. Uh, Mr. Sushil Khanal from Nepal, uh, you can start. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are. Hi, everyone. I am Sushil Khanal from Arhanchi. Currently, I am studying public health in Manmohan Memorial Institute of Health Science. Uh, I'm, uh, and I am working as an independent youth activist, activist at TB, Free World, and uh, again, independent youth activist at SG to promote SDG. I am planning, uh, after, lo after lock COVID-19 lockdown, I am planning to uh, work for a goal SDG 3 and uh, SDG goal number 6. Uh, as I am belonging to my to belonging to health health student, I am I am to I am going far to health screening campaign or uh, sanitation and was created program uh, to enhance uh, uh, to identify the problems in the in different districts and uh, communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sushil. So uh, now we have, have uh, come to the end of this uh, uh, experience sharing about uh, how we can contribute after the lockdown is over. So uh, we are about uh, at the closing of our program. Uh, so before uh, moving forward with the closing, uh, the next thing that is uh, remaining is uh, about the feedback. So uh, you can feel free to uh, drop your feedbacks in uh, WhatsApp group or the chat here itself. And uh, we are happy uh, seeing uh, all of you gather here for today's webinar. It uh, was indeed overwhelming for us. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone present here, our facilitators, sponsors, uh, media partner, uh, beautiful, uh, our participants, and the next gen team as well. Uh, so uh, all the feedback form is in the chat box. And uh, we request all the participants uh, to fill the feedback form. And uh, unless uh, the feedback form is uh, filled, uh, we would be unable to provide the certificate. So I request all the participants to fill the feedback form as uh, given in the WhatsApp group as well as the chat box. 
Uh, okay, so uh, the five minute space is open for feeling the feedback. And afterwards, uh, we can have a small sharing of uh, the feedback as well. GR has uh, encountered uh, some problem. So uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, his, uh, I'd like to acknowledge his words, uh, however. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm quoting Mr. Jay Kishan Panjia. Uh, so uh, Mr. Jay Kishan Panjia is saying, uh, good evening, distinguished, dedicated ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the pandemic has utterly exposed uh, fundamental weaknesses in our global system. UNESCO estimates that some uh, 1.25 billion students are affected by this pandemic, posing a serious challenge to attainment of goal four. A uh, million people could lose their jobs with those in informal em employment, suffering from lack of uh, water and lack of social protection during this pandemic. Effect on good health and well being, goal three, uh, clean water and sanitation targets, goal six, weak economic growth and absence of decent work security, goal two. Uh, the World Bank estimates that the crisis will push uh, some 11 million people into poverty. SDGs are even more relevant today than ever before. Uh, the primary cost of the pandemic of livelihoods, uh, pandemic as seen in the loss of human lives is distressing. But the secondary effects on the global economy, on livelihoods and on sustainable development prospects are even more alarming. Pandemic with common global challenges uh, that can only be solved through common global solutions. Uh, <clears throat> global solutions. Uh, when we walk out of this webinar, uh, we can choose either to forget or we can choose to take action. I hope uh, by 2030, most of us will reflect on what we have done with uh, our talents and our energy in accomplishing United Nations SDG goals, a global agenda of 17 goals to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. I urge you all to take action to achieve UN SDC goals. Uh, and at last, uh, the vote of thanks for our uh, sponsors and speakers. So uh, I'm quoting Mr. Chair Kishan Panjiyar. Uh, I, on behalf of Next Gen Committee, uh, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the honorable delegates of Kulchuk Campus who blessed us with their presence and uh, took out uh, the valuable time of their busy schedule. Uh, I would like to extend special thanks to Gapu Marketplace for supporting as associate partner, Tech Sathi and Tech Patro for supporting as media partner, Nepal Research and Education Network, NREN, and Society of Electronics and Communication Engineers, Nepal, SECEN, for supporting as technical partners, and Sparrow SMS as SMS partner. Also, I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Mr. Mark Zakinto and Ms. Nijina Sodikova for their speech, presentation, and commitment uh, towards sustainable development goals. I have been very impressed uh, and touched by the active participation of the participants exceptionally, and uh, they deserve a huge round of applause, as no program can be become successful with a single person. So I extend my big thanks to our Next Gen Committee members for the support and dedication in organizing events with speakers and audience from all around the globe. Uh, thank you guys for making this event successful uh, with your contribution. Okay, so uh, with this, we've come to uh, conclude our uh, <laughs> conclude our program. So uh, thank you all the attendees for being a part of uh, uh, today's webinar. I hope uh, we can all work together on continued agenda of our <laughs> sustainable development goals. Uh, at last, uh, the space is open for some feedback and suggestions. So if uh, anybody wants to uh, provide some feedback or suggestion or compliment us, uh, the field is open.